zooming like Chip did flip. I never let a nigga do me like Chip did flip. I never let a nigga do me like Chip did flip. What up guys, it's your boy Quake and I'm back with a brand new episode of Who Really Won. The feedback on the last one was amazing, the game versus 50 Cent. I mean, the comments that I got, the likes, the shares, the responses were crazy. And that one took insanely a long time to finish. So you know I appreciated the feedback a lot because that showed me that all that hard work that I did was well worth it. So thank you guys so much for that. But now it's time for a brand new episode of Who Really Won. And this is a beef that I got requested multiple times in the comments. I kept seeing it over and over again. And I really wanted to do it just because it's one of my favorite beefs in hip hop history. This battle was something between two southern artists one from Atlanta one from Houston with both having big big egos they both claimed the king of the south title at the time and they were going head to head over that title so as you can tell by the video title I'm talking about TI versus Lil Flip who really won the beef since has been squashed but it's going to be fun to go back in time look at the beef look at what happened and who really won in this a lot of classic diss records were birthed in this a lot of great moments in hip-hop were birthed in this and this also let people know who really is the king of the south and who's gonna have longevity because as you guys know every hip-hop MC needs to be able to hold his ground when somebody goes at the throne that he's on now this beef did not only birth great tracks great moments but of an altercation happened where allegedly some people got into a fight so this beef did get physical it is an actual beef it's not just a battle on wax so if you've seen the who really won episodes you know exactly how we start out the first thing we look at is how this beef initially started and there are two sides to the story there's Lil Flip's side and T.I.'s side and I'm going to look at both sides and then we're gonna get into the major points in the beef and then we're going to talk about who won the battle portion of the beef, which is the short-term portion of the beef. In the midst of the battle, who won it when everything was going on, who really won that portion. And then we're going to look at the war portion of the beef, which is the long-term portion of the beef, longevity, who after the beef prevailed more, succeeded more. So with that being said, get your drink, get your popcorn, sit back, relax, and enjoy this episode. Let's get into it. You ain't official. You never ran the streets. You had a motherfucking curfew in high school. And furthermore, nigga, you was a janitor in high school. Man. And then you, I can't fuck with you, shout I don't give a damn who you is, shout and what you sell, and how many other motherfuckers like you, nigga. And furthermore, and time, nigga, you out of pocket with me, nigga. It's a must that I have that ass, nigga, by any means necessary. And I will spare no expense on your pussy ass, nigga. Officially started. I'm going to tell T.I. side of the story, and then I'm going to tell Lil Flip side of the story. T.I. says he first met Lil Flip during a photo shoot for the cover of The Source magazine. Now, the guy who produced Lil Flip's biggest hit, Game Over, was really close friends with T.I. So the producer came up to T.I. and asked, would you like to jump on Lil Flip's Game Over track? And T.I. says that he had jumped on the remix for Game Over. So during the photo shoot, T.I. came up to Lil Flip and asked him, did you hear my remix to your song Game Over? Lil Flip sort of brushed it off and said, hey, we're doing a couple remixes for East Coast, for the West Coast, and for Down South. And apparently T.I. says he didn't take it any sort of way that Lil Flip didn't approve him on the remix. He just said, okay, that's cool. T.I. then proceeds to say that it was sort of an ego battle with Lil Flip during the photo shoot for The Source. T.I. says that he had two little chains on him and he had asked one of his friends to give him a bigger chain. T.I. then says Lil Flip saw him do that and that he asked his own homies to do the same thing. T.I. ended up saying that Lil Flip was copying him during the photo shoot, copying his poses, taking as much change as he took. So that's where the beef had sort of somewhat started. It wasn't official. That was just a little small ego battle. So T.I. says what officially started the beef was that when T.I. got locked up in the summer of 2003 for a probation violation, he ended up serving one year of prison time. 
And while he was locked up, he kept hearing that Lil Flip was claiming the King of the South title and that he was going around concert to concert saying that he's the true King of the South. And apparently Lil Flip was in Atlanta kicking it with some females that knew T.I.'s wife, Tiny. While backstage at his Atlanta concert, he was talking to those females and said that, hey, I'm the actual King of the South and we're gonna see on stage tonight who's the true King of the South. He went on stage apparently that night and asked the Atlanta crowd who's the king of the south. Every Atlanta person in the crowd yelled out T.I. He then said fuck no and said it's over for him and then right when he said that he dropped the song Game Over and performed his set. Now word got to T.I. while he was incarcerated that this happened. Now this is the initial reason why T.I. went at Lil Flip. This is T.I.'s side of the story. Now let's talk about what initiated it for Lil Flip. Let's go to Lil Flip's side of the story. Now Lil Flip also says that he first met T.I. at the Source Magazine photo shoot, but his side is that T.I. came up to him and asked to be on the Game Over remix, but Lil Flip said no, and because he said no, that's when T.I. got mad that he refused to have him on the remix. Lil Flip also says because T.I. got incarcerated and that he didn't make it on the new Source Magazine cover, he got jealous that Lil Flip made it on there and that Lil Flip was popping in the South and that's why T.I. decided to take shots at Lil Flip. So that's Lil Flip's side of the story and earlier was T.I.'s side of the story. We don't know officially what happened. When they get interviewed, they didn't really answer what side was the truth and clearly T.I. is going to say his side is the truth and Lil Flip's going to say his side is the truth. Regardless, the beef has been squashed so it doesn't really matter at this point. So between summer of 2003 when T.I. got incarcerated to summer of 2004, not really much happened. No diss tracks were made. Just a few words were exchanged here and there between camps. But other than that, nothing really happened. Now in summer 2004, T.I. had been released after being incarcerated for a little over a year for that probation violation. And nobody really knew that he was getting released in the summer of 2004 because he was scheduled to serve three years. Instead, he only served a year. So the general public had no idea that T.I. was getting released. And while he was playing this low-key game of pretending to still be locked up, he ended up recording music and diss songs towards Lil Flip. So on June 19th, 2004, T.I. surprised everyone and got on stage at the annual Atlanta birthday bash. He came out with a song called Welcome Back, and in this song he was sending shots directly at Lil Flip. And while on stage, T.I. said, bring Lil Flip out on stage with me because I want to confront him for talking all this shit while I was incarcerated. Of course, it was rumored that Lil Flip was set to perform at the birthday bash, but Lil Flip maintains that his flight was delayed and that he couldn't make it at birthday bash on time. But clearly that didn't stop T.I. That night he spit a freestyle dissing Lil Flip. He also brought a gang of posters of Lil Flip wearing a leprechaun suit from his first underground studio album, The Leprechaun. And above it, it said game over with question marks. And he was just clowning him the whole night saying that he's a little bitch, that he's just saying shit behind his back while he was incarcerated and that he won't do anything. And since I've been gone, I guess it's a nigga who feel like he can come and take my crown. Oh, shit. I sure wish he would have, I sure wish he would have said it to my face. <laughs> hey, look, Flip, I heard you in the house, my nigga. Check. Tell him bring it, punk ass to the stage. Check. Look, Flip, I heard you in the house, bring your punk ass to the stage. We'll bring him to the stage. Has anybody? We'll bring him to the has stage. Has anybody seen Lil Flip lately? We'll bring him to the stage. Do you got, we'll has anybody bring him to seen the Lil Flip lately? We'll bring him to the stage. Does anybody we'll know how Lil Flip to came into the game? We'll hey, bring that nigga to the stage. Y'all want one? I got several copies. Yeah. Y'all remember this nigga now. <laughs> that time that nigga start playing like he hard. Y'all remember this? Mr. Lucky Charm. I'm going to tell you what, Flip. <laughs> Pussy nigga, I'm the leader of the troops. You just following suit. I Hold got on. a question for anybody following you. What kind of nigga take a picture in a lucky charm suit with a lollipop chain and some leprechaun boots? And it was rumored that Lil Flip's dad came backstage at the concert 
and tried to confront T.I. about it and wanted to end the beef with Flip and T.I. And Lil Flip says that his dad did that by himself and that he didn't ask his father to do that. But of course, T.I. denied that story and said that Lil Flip isn't a grown man because his own father had to get involved in his beef and had asked T.I. to end the beef, which is a sucker move. Now, after this incident, Lil Flip was confused because Lil Flip maintains that he did not diss T.I. while he was incarcerated and said that he paid T.I. homage during a freestyle he spit for BT's Access Granted. And of course, T.I. did not believe that. So after T.I. performed at the birthday bash, a few days later passed and Lil Flip flew overseas to the UK to do Tim Westwood's show and while on there he spit a freestyle over Fat Joe's lean back instrumental and dedicated a few bars going towards T.I. Nigga, you lucky my plane got delayed Cause I would've knocked your punk ass off the stage You were seven time felon, what you care about a case? Yeah, you got out of jail early cause you working with the state snitch You a bitch, been a bitch, still a bitch And yeah, that leprechaun too got me filthy rich I should've known you was a snake when you was at the source photo shoot Just smiling in my face, trying to get on the game over remix But I told you no, I only do tracks with niggas that I think dope And niggas know, the streets I'm the hardest So why in the fuck would I diss a go artist? I'm from the dirt Dirty, dirty, and I represent. I get here like the muff, me president. Southside, and we ride on 20 inches. I got a million dollars. I'm not a penny pincher. Holla back. Now that both artists have spit bars against each other on wax, the beef was officially on, and T.I. had gotten word that Lil Flip was going after him during Tim Westwood's show. So, T.I. did what he does best, get the music together, he hit up DJ Drama for a Gangster Grills, and they decided to team up in July 2004 to drop a mixtape called Gangster Grills, Down With The King. And on this mixtape, he's going directly at Lil Flip in various songs. Miss me while I was gone, now I'm back in the song Got a message for the nigga who attacking the throne You gon' make me put this heater to the back of your dome Flip your little ass from the front to the back of your home Any idiot can see you should've left me alone Cause they know the game over when I catch you alone Flip, I'ma show you about addressing me wrong I'm after your lucky charms, nigga, let it be known like a pussy nigga named Lil Wesley trying to test me On your best behavior with your faggot ass best be Choose words carefully when you address me You ain't gotta like me, but you gonna respect me Or else, or else get wet like a jet ski Nigga, take ten of these and live, that'll impress me Say I wanna rap on your song, you ain't let me See you on the front of the source like that upset me Nigga, fuck you in the ass, I ain't mad about shit Try and tip shot quick, so all your ass gon' get Say fuck nigga, hey, I heard you talking about me nigga you wanna see me, nigga? Come see me, nigga. ATL West Side Zone One. You understand Thank that, nigga? Matter of fact, I come see you, nigga. In the suburban area of Houston, nigga. I know you can't come to the city, nigga. <laughs> Fuck, boy. <laughs> nigga, what? You a janitor in high school? You suck ass, nigga. Thought we forgot. Nigga, Hump say he made you put on that motherfucking leprechaun suit, nigga. You talking about you got rich off that shit, nigga? You ain't even get no car, nigga, to this next house. But that's not the craziest part. T.I. managed to get Scarface, who, in my opinion, at the time was the king of the South, truly, to get on a phone call with him and talk about how Lil Flip isn't the gangster that he claims to be and how Scarface has no idea who Lil Flip is. This is crazy because Lil Flip always has maintained that he looks up to Scarface and that he's the true king of the South. But Scarface said that he doesn't care about the King of the South title and that T.I. can have it. So this was a slap in the face to Lil Flip and I'm sure he's really hurt by this. So during the phone call, T.I. pretty much exposed Lil Flip and did a couple of skits with Scarface talking about how Lil Flip isn't the gangster that he is. Doing what's right, man. You doing what's hood, man. That nigga say he from your hood. No, no. You know, like, I ain't never seen that nigga over there, man. <laughs> <laughs> the nigga hiding behind you like he trying to put you against me saying, yeah, man, you know, Scarface the king of the South, you had me. Like, the nigga copping deuces. You can't put me in that shit, bro. You ain't never ever heard me say it. You know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't want to be no king of, of nothing. Feel me? Nigga, you can have that shit. <laughs> Lil Flip then retaliated with a bunch of diss tracks. He even dropped his own mixtape called The Champions. He had a few skits going at T.I. and a few diss tracks going at T.I. He also released a bunch of random diss tracks that were not on mixtapes. Songs like They Call Me F.L.I.P. 
and another diss track called What's Beef. And all these tracks were released at different times and not on mixtapes. I'ma tell you like this, you a bitch and I know it. How you get out of jail early, you a snitch, I can show it. Here go my dick, you can blow it since I stay on your mind. I know niggas that don't like you, that stay in your time. I know about your mixtape and that verse on trick shit. Nigga, I'm a warrior, you just a misfit, get it? A black fitted, black gloves, a black stub. The difference between me and you is I pack clubs. I don't need no help when I handle my biz Then you rap niggas be on my dick more than my bitch I'm not a cupcake nigga, I'm hard as a rock I'm like Pac, I got shot Then I checked myself out, the doc told me to get rest But I went to the lab, I'm hitting you with an uppercut You shouldn't have went for that jab Now my whole state pissed, cause you don't know who you diss You diss me, then you diss the whole screwed up click And while these diss tracks were going on the beef had gotten very, very intense and T.I. decided to take it to the next level. He decided to go on tour to promote his album, Urban Legend. And while he was promoting his album, he did a tour and he ended up stopping in Houston. And that's, of course, Lil Flip's hometown. And while in Houston, he did a radio interview. And right after that radio interview, he decided to go to Lil Flip's hood, Cloverland. And this is where the story gets mixed up once again because T.I. tells his side of the story and Lil Flip tells his side. T.I.'s side is that when he showed up, he saw Lil Flip and Lil Flip decided to hide behind a car. And while he was hiding behind a car, T.I. was pursuing him. But one of Lil Flip's homies went right behind T.I. and hit him in his head. And that's where the fight ensued. And after the fight ensued, a gun went off and then everybody ran and got back in their vehicles and got out of there. And T.I. says he does have video footage of this happening. He has proof that this happened, but it's 2017 and we still never got the video footage. So I highly doubt he does have any video footage. T.I. also maintained that he did not get hurt at all. His face is perfectly fine. He even went on to go to a radio station in Atlanta and talk about how his face is perfectly fine and he showed the radio host apparently the video footage and that everything was okay and all the rumors of him saying he got beat up are completely false. I right, to show my face and show the tape, man. You know, I showed him the tape. I showed them everything that happened. They seen it. I, I, it, it was some, some Flip was hiding. I, I, seen, I seen the tape. I'm not even <laughs> I told him, come on out. What's happening? What you want to do? He walked behind the car. He's ain't seen it. Yeah, and you know, a lot of people didn't come up. They called up and they said, basically, like, I guess, you know, you got stolen on. That did happen. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, he did send somebody. He was why he was walking behind the car, and I'm walking up to him trying to beg him to come off of behind the car so we can get a square deal going. He sent somebody up from behind, and they hit me in the back of the head. That did happen, yeah. Yeah, he made a comment about it. He said he was going to harm my son. And, and, and before then, you know, I was real low-key. I hadn't even said nothing about dude or nothing. But after I heard that, I felt that, you know, it deserved a little attention. Man, that nigga T.I. didn't swing one time. And if he say he swung, he a lying-ass nigga, man. Tell him to be real. I know he got scared. I feel him because he dying out of the place, but he did not do that. But it wasn't even a hostile environment. He was with the niggas going to protect him. Already. But he didn't even have to run. He didn't have to do that. We wanted to see him and Flip lock up one on one. Nah, I know it's a lot of boys out here don't understand this, but Flip showed up. Yeah, he did that. That fucked us up. That fucked y'all up. That fucked us up. Flip showed up, tank top, ready to squall. Nah, that's good. Yeah, he did that. Man, you know what I'm talking about? That's what T.I. had out. Huh. I ain't gonna shoot so much, man. That nigga Flip swung on T.I. Now, Lil Flip's side of the story is essentially the same thing almost. Lil Flip, though, maintains that he did not hide behind a vehicle like T.I. says and that T.I. got beat up a lot more than T.I. himself said. He did not just get hit in behind the head. He actually got beat up in front of his face and all kinds of other areas. Lil Flip also said the gunshot is what made the whole fight end and that's exactly what T.I. said as well. So that portion of it is correct and nobody's lying on either end. A month passed after that altercation and Jay Prince, who's the CEO of Rap A Lot Records, decided to get Lil Flip and T.I. in the same room to finally squash the beef. And luckily, they squashed it. Because ever since then, there has been no diss tracks going back and forth with Lil Flip and T.I. since that meeting. So clearly, whatever happened in that meeting worked because it's done. And I'm surprised it's done because with the altercation happening and with Photoshop, you know, putting all these disrespectful things out there. I'm surprised it ended like that. You know, that's that's rare that that ever happens. 
in music and in life in general, just having two people sit down and talk things through and it going smoothly. And we, we eventually sat down and talked and had a conversation and, um, you know, the agreement was, you know, I'm not going to say nothing else about him and he ain't going to say nothing else about me and, and we kept it moving like that, you know. Okay, so Jay Prince was the one that kind of reached out to the both of y'all and, and basically said y'all need to work it out. Right. That's how it went. Now let's talk about who won the battle portion of the beef, which is the short-term portion of the beef, in the midst of the battle, who was winning the whole thing. Now for me, this is hard because both artists were doing good things in the beef and bad things. I'm gonna start with T.I., the good things that he did and the bad things. T.I., initially, him starting the beef, going on stage, bringing out those posters of him in a leprechaun, low flip in a leprechaun suit with the game over, him calling him out, releasing a diss track immediately after getting out of prison. That's an aggressive move, and that was a smart move. It was a Jay-Z Summer Jam stage move. It looked really good on T.I., and clearly it showed Lil' Flip as someone that's not willing to engage in beef with someone like T.I. And another good thing that T.I. did was got with DJ Drama and released that mixtape down with the king immediately during the beef. You know, he got tracks out, got on wax, made sure that he put his foot on on Lil Flip's neck and kept going at him. The fact that he got Scarface, somebody who Lil Flip looked up to, to diss him was an amazing move. Plus the diss tracks like Welcome Back and the Freestyle over the 99 Problems beat were both fire. I could bump those to this day and it's some of my favorite diss tracks. Plus T.I. got someone from Lil Flip's hood, Lil Third, to go at Lil Flip as well and even signed Trey The Truth who's from Houston to make it seem like Houston was rocking with T.I. more, so it's more of a psychological move that I really, really respect. It's something that 50 Cent would do, something that a Jay-Z would do. It's just a smarter, smarter move in terms of these beefs. But the things that I can't overlook that T.I. really messed up on was the fact that he claimed to have video footage of two major events in this beef. The first one was the fact that he had claimed to have video footage of Lil Flip dissing him in Atlanta, and that's why the beef initially started, but we never saw video footage of that ever happening. So it makes it seem like Lil Flip was telling the truth and saying that he never dissed T.I. in Atlanta like T.I. claimed. T.I. also claimed that he had video footage of the fight that happened in Cloverland. Now that never got released, like I said earlier, so it makes T.I. look like a liar in this whole beef. Plus, a lot of people from Cloverland say that T.I. did get beat up when he showed up he got beat up now you can give him points for showing up in someone else's hood I mean that's most people wouldn't do that that's just a fact so you can give him points for that but the fact that he got beat up and he didn't do exactly what he said he was gonna do it's an L ultimately the things that Lil Flip did right was go right back at T.I. and on top of that do a couple of hot freestyles I mean he can spit a tiny bit better than T.I. in my opinion because He's a battle rapper. He said he started out as a battle rapper, so he's been doing this. And on top of that, during this beef, he was a lot hotter than T.I. I mean, he had the hit record Sunshine and Game Over at the same time playing, while T.I. had a rubber band man in 24s, but that wasn't as big as those records. Even though I like Lil Flip's diss tracks, like They Call Me F.L.I.P. and What's Beef and the Lean Back Freestyle, I can't overlook the fact that he made a Ja Rule mistake. Now, if you guys know the 50 Cent and Ja Rule beef, Ja Rule decided to turn into a more gangster rapper while he was beefing with 50. And this is the same thing Lil Flip did with T.I. Lil Flip more was a radio artist and he was making more girl songs, you know, hits for females like Sunshine. Game Over wasn't really a hard like street record like T.I.'s or Band Man or 24's. T.I. was more on the gangster route and Lil Flip was more on the pop, you know, mainstream route. And there's nothing wrong with being on a pop route. I mean, Drake owned Meek Mill by staying in his pop lane. He knew exactly what he was doing. He didn't try to switch up and be more of a gangster rapper. And that's where Lil Flip went really wrong is that he decided to focus more on making gangster music. And that's why he did not maintain having more hits and longevity over time. Now this is a really, really close battle and it's very hard for me. This is one of those beefs where it's very hard to decide who really won the battle. For me, I slightly, slightly give it to T.I., and here's why. Although he didn't provide the video footage that he claimed he had, and it made him seem like a liar, he did deliver slightly better diss tracks, and the fact that he got Lil Flip's, one of Lil Flip's idols to turn on him, which was Scarface, 
was a major, major move. Plus the whole incident of going on stage, clowning him for being a leprechaun, which was facts. I mean, Lil Flip decided to Photoshop T.I.'s head on a skinny body, but that wasn't a fact. T.I. came with facts in this whole beef. Plus T.I. showed up in someone else's hood. Yeah, he might have gotten beat up, maybe. I mean, we still don't know 100%. There's never pictures that surface of T.I. having a messed up face or video footage of T.I. running or Lil Flip running. We don't know 100% facts. And the fact that we don't know 100% just shows that, you know, it could have gone either way. So that's why I give him slightly T.I. winning the battle portion because he showed up in someone else's hood and just said, fuck it, whatever happens, happens. And that's rarely ever done by any rapper. I can barely think of any rappers that done that. Now let's talk about the war portion of the beef, which is the longevity after the beef died out, who prevailed more, who had bigger albums, bigger hits. And this is clear as day. I mean, there's really no arguing in this. It's clearly T.I. T.I.'s had a more consistent career than Lil Flip. After the beef, Lil Flip sort of started to die down. And a lot of people say T.I. killed his career. Lil Flip maintains that he just doesn't want to do music anymore. He started not liking it as much. And of course, anyone would say that when their career is slowly declining. It's clear T.I. sold more albums. T.I. is truly the king of the South now. I mean, the debate of who's the king of the South, T.I. is definitely in the conversation. And Lil Flip is nowhere near in the conversation. Lil Flip might be in the conversation of who's the king of Houston or something like that. But he's nowhere near in the conversation of who's the king of the South. So to me, T.I. won the war portion. It's clear as day. And anyone who can't see that is just a T.I. hater, I guess. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Who Really Won? T.I. versus Lil Flip. I've done multiple episodes on various beefs like Gucci Mane versus Young Jeezy, 50 Cent versus Rick Ross, 50 Cent versus The Game, 50 Cent versus Cameron, Meek Mill versus Drake, and much, much more. And you can check out all those episodes towards the end of this video. Just click the video link and it'll direct you to the Who Really Won Episodes playlist where you can check out all the episodes. I will be covering every single major hip hop beef. You just have to give me time because these videos take a lot of time when it comes to research and video editing and recording the audio for it. This is my most popular series and it just takes a lot of time to make these videos. So bear with me, I will cover everything. So with that being said, leave a comment below. Let me know who you guys think won the battle portion, who won the war portion. Like, share, definitely, definitely subscribe. I do videos like this daily on hip hop news, who changed the music industry, who really won videos, top 10 countdowns, what really happened to, and much, much more. So definitely subscribe. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram at QuakeGW and like us on Facebook. And I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.